Hey folks, welcome back to another pretty useful video. And it's probably um, the third part of my recent series about treating samples or something like this, uh, where you probably watched the video with the auto leveler and with the loud split. So this is part three, you can use all these things together. So let's imagine you have um, an audio track here and you want to sample some percussions, right? So what you do is you hit record probably uh, without the... And you have this nice kalimba sound in there. And you, when you want to use this in the sampler, you just can drag it into the sampler and then modify it in the sampler if you want to. Um, but we are a bit lazy and we want to learn something, so we use multiple things here. First up, we use a loud split to get rid of the noise in here. Maybe I track this in here. You can see we have a lot of noise here from the microphones. We just disable the noise and are left with the tonal parts and the interesting parts. So this is pretty easy. And then we want to normalize it so we can use our auto level preset we made in the last video. Pull down the threshold here a bit. You can see we have it nicely peaking here at 0 minus 0 0.3 dB, so it's nicely normalized. And then the third problem is, and this is what this video is about, it's about um, quantizing the position of this, right? You can see here we snap to the grid. We can't really cut it on the right at this position here easily. Uh, I'm sure we can use here the knife, um, knife tool, right? And try to cut it, but it's not really on point. So what I usually want to have is exactly this starting point on the grid. And you can do this in the sampler. There's a snap feature in there and also in here. Um, the transient is perfectly recognized by Bitwig. But this is just a theoretical video where you, where we want to learn something and want to dive into grid and try to have some solutions with the grid. So we want to quantize audio with the FX grid. And I want to show you this here, how you can kind of do it. We have some shortcomings here because of the recorder. Um, the recorder doesn't have maybe or doesn't have that long of recording time, maybe two seconds or something. I, I'm not really sure, but it's only yeah, it only works for percussion sounds for short sounds. So we want to record here when there is audio on the on the signal. So we use a follower for that. So the follower tells us if there is something happening. Okay, so every time something happens, we want to switch on the recording, but this doesn't work really well. You can see it just stops because the signal here from the follower falls pretty quickly uh, below 0 0.5, which is the which is the gate needed gate value here. So we need to hold on to this on information with the latch. The latch is basically just a module that switches between, between zero and one. And you want to switch it on every time this event happens here. You can see it holds on to recording this uh, thing here. And then we want to switch it off every time this level or this value goes below a certain value. Um, so we need the logic module for that smaller than. So every time this value is smaller than the constant of 0 0.02, so not really zero, so a little bit above zero. And you can change this for whatever you want to do, whatever your threshold is. And then we want to stop recording. That's a bit too short, so maybe increase the default time. Beep. 
and then it stops recording maybe a bit shorter something like this so now we have the recording logic here and now we need the playback logic and we use maybe a trigger for that um let's go for one here and then we get basically the trigger signal sends out the trigger perfectly in sync perfectly on the grid it's exactly what we want but we don't want to start recording here every time this happens right so we need some logic there and we want to start recording every time this trigger is true and also we want to make this trigger short so if you use here an oscilloscope you can see the on time is pretty long right here yeah, this on section is pretty long so we use a length signal here for that and make it just one millisecond maybe about five milliseconds so pretty short we just want to have an event here happening and this event is then compared with um when there's no recording happening so this one tells here the recorder when to record so we use a not so every time every time this records or doesn't record and is a zero we want to turn this into an on effect or on value so every time this is not recording we want to have a true here and every time this trigger is then active we want to trigger it so we have these two conditions met and then we can hit play basically yeah and then we need also a ledge of course in here um, we want to switch this on and we want to switch it off every time we start recording and then after the record starts uh, stops we want to start the playback okay so let's try this out give this here a bounce out actually a bit longer something like this we hit stop here of course that doesn't work that's not correct oh sure my mistake of course we have to use the recorder bounce so now we have to set a different position here and it's nearly perfectly on the grid there's some overlap here right from here to here so we need to fix that maybe with a delay of maybe a small delay in there So let's try this again. Bounce. You can see now it's nearly perfect on the grid, right? So now we have basically a nice little quantizing thing here. Um, and all you have to do next time is to load up this kind of chain and it cleans up your sample it cleans up your sample it normalizes it, your sample and it also uh, quantizes it, it to the grid and all you have to do is just drag this here drag this there and hit Control and g and then maybe drag it into the sampler and you have a perfectly nice starting point it's cleaned up there's no noise in there and it's also normalized right so this would be a nice little chain you can use for sampling and then right click here detect tool key so it's easy to do and it helps you a bit in your daily sampling workflow maybe so this is an idea for something like 
this grid here, right? But we can also do with this here some weirder stuff. So maybe we increase here the triggers behavior to eight, um, eight nodes. So we trigger this more often. And we maybe also want to decrease here the falling time. And we just want to record stuff on the fly. Um, so let's see. So I record it. I record multiple multiple sounds. Okay. So we have now this here. This and this is completely off the grid, right? So let's try and use our weird little audio effect here. Yeah? Now we have something like this. It's kind of quantized. Sometimes maybe some of these percussion sounds are missing, but you get the idea, right? So you can do some kind of live um, audio quantizing effect with this here. Maybe use 16 notes. It's basically what the clock quantizer does, but for audio. Bounce. Right, so we have a normalized signal, it's quantized in a way. Um, it's also cleaned with noise, so there's no noise in there. So it's, yeah, it's probably an interesting effect here when you want to sample something, percussion sounds, whatever, um, and then you want to track it into the sampler or maybe you want to use it in your project and it's already nicely synchronized or quantized. Okay, so yeah. This is, uh, of course, available here in uh, the description below. You can download this from my GitHub. It's just a small idea I had uh, last night, and I thought it's maybe worth sharing. Maybe you have some use cases for that. And um, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up. If you have some questions, let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.